All right, today we're going to talk about the law of sines, which is a way that we can find um, angles and side measurements um, for triangles that are not right triangles. Um, so the law of sines is listed out here. You really only use two at a time, and then it's a proportion. So you can cross multiply and divide to find what you're missing. So the sine of angle A over the side A, sine of angle B over the side B, is equal to the sine of C over the side C, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and do this using the area formula. So we know that from yesterday, and by yesterday I mean before break, um, that we had area formulas, and there were three of them, but let's just say we pick one of them. Area equals one half BC times the sine of A, Or actually, what I want to do, because they're all equal to the area of the triangle, is I'm just going to set them equal to each other. So instead of area, I'm going to put um, another one of our formulas here and the third one on this side. One half AC sine B. Okay, so these are our three area formulas um, that we did the Thursday before break. And since they're all equal to the area of this triangle, I set them equal to each other. Um, what I want to do from here, what I want to do is get rid of all of these one-halves. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 2, okay, which is just going to get rid of all these halves. Um, so then I just have AB sine C equals BC sine A equals AC sine B. And then how I can turn this into this is, if you notice on top, it's just sine A, sine B, sine C. And then I have a mixture of the sides um, in front of each. So what I'm going to do is divide this whole thing by A, B, C. So I'm going to go ahead and write the whole thing out. So I'm doing this over A, B, C. this over ABC, and this over ABC. And then, in this case, A and B cancel out. In this case, B and C cancel out. In this case, A and C cancel out. So then I have sine of C over C equals sine of A over A and sine of B over B. Okay, which is where this law of sines comes from. Okay, um, to do this, you need to know, so let's say I'm using this part of the proportion. I need to know three items to solve for this one. Um, so not every single problem will work with the law of sines. So let's take a look at some examples here. It's saying, if I know angle A, is 43 and little a is 20 and little b is 21, can I use the law of sines? And the answer is yes because I have the angle a and little a. Okay, you need at least two of the same. And then I could solve this for angle b and keep going. Um, so this one's a yes. For number two, they're saying if angle b is 87, Little a is 11 and little c is 9. Can I solve for anything that's missing? And I can't because all of these are different. Okay, I would need this side, which I can't find, or I would need one of these angles, which I can't find. Okay, so this one's no. Um, here, number three, I have 47 for a. 98 for B, and 24 for C. Now at first glance, none of these are the same letter, but the difference for this one is, is I can find angle C because these have to add to 180. So if I take 180 minus 98 and 47 
then I have 35. So really what I have, I do have the angle C also. Okay, so since I have two of the same, it works. Here I have two of the same letter, it works. Solve for the missing parts of the triangle. So here, straight across this is little c, and straight across this will be little b. So let's go ahead and find this side. So if I have the sine of 106 over 25, that's equal to the sine of 45 over b. Now I can cross multiply. And I'm just going to round to the nearest hundredth. So we'll do 17.68 equals 0.96b. which is 18.42 equals B. Okay, I'm going to repeat this process for A. To find angle A, I'm going to take 180 minus those two angles, which is 29 degrees. So I'm going to use C again. I'm going to use the same proportion. Sine of 106 over 25 equals sine of 29 over A. So here, 25 sine of 29. Is going to be 12.12 .12 equals 0 0.96 A. is 12.63 for side A. All right, so this triangle is done. Moving on to this one, I know side A, and I need angle A so I can use that as a proportion, but I can find that pretty easily by taking 180 minus my two angles. So that's 59. So I would do sine of 59 over 9. That's my proportion I'm going to use to help me find um, side B and side C. And again, those are just straight across. So let's say I do sine of 57 over B. So this is 7.55 equals 0 0.86 B which is 8.78 right and then we'll repeat this process for C so this proportion is the same And then you have sine of 64 this time over C. So you have 8.09 equals 0 0.86 C is 9.41. All right, last one. This time I have these two um, for A, and since I know that this is my side length of B, I'm going to first try to find my angle measurement of B, um, and I'm going to switch color so because things are starting to run together again. Um, so I'm going to find B first. So I know that sine of 115 goes over 20 because that's A and A, and then sine of B will go over 11. So 11 sine of 115 is 
equals 20 sine b. So then we divide that by 20. So that's 0 0.50 equals sine b. So then b is equal b is let me erase that b equals the inverse what is happening the inverse sine of a half there we go so if i type that in i get 30 So that's 30 degrees. So if I take that minus 180, this one is 35 degrees. And then I still have to find um, C. So I would, I would do from here sine of 115 over 20, just like before. And then I have sine of 35 my new angle over C. So that would be 11.47 equals 0.91C and then you can just divide. So 12.60 equals C. Alright, so that's it for today. Um, you're working on pages 7 and 8 for your assignment.